So today we are going to talk about colors. My approach and use of colors throughout the years in my art, in my palette, in my studio and in my home. How to be inspired by colors from past century, the 17th and the 18th century. How to get better using them, mixing them and associating them. And the uplifting magical power of colors. Colors are a magical mirror which reveals our taste, our distaste, our fears, our hidden thoughts, and tells essential things about the world and ourselves. This is what writes Michel Pastoureau, the specialist historian of colors, in his little book of colors. Whatever your approach is to the six main colors or five half colors, whether blue is your favorite color like most people in the Western world since the 18th century, or you rather prefer the most dangerous color, red, the color of ambition, crime, anger, sin, opera, theater, Christmas, or if you cherish brown, the forgotten color nobody likes, according to opinion surveys, you live in a period where the world has never been so colorful. And as colors are now available to everyone for no cost, we became less sensitive to colors than in the past. Children from the late 19th century were blown away when they received a little selection of color pencils. Nowadays, children own giant boxes of 50 plus markers, which cost around one euro that they ignore completely, preferring digital distractions. In our art studio, we have an easy access to any medium and in the blink of an eye, a ready-to-use color comes out directly from the tube. Every nuance we could wish for. Something artists from the 17th and 18th century would have never dreamed of. As a paper artist, throughout the years, I had some very colorful periods using bright and intense colors, and others of monochrome white, focusing more on the texture and effect I could create with paper. But mastering color and getting very comfortable using them, mixing them and associating them is a lifetime apprenticeship. And I'm still learning today. But as years go by, I became a real minimalist when it comes to colors. The colors I use the most are red and yellow, a tiny bit of black and a bit of white. Very, very occasionally blue, but pretty much never. This is a pretty minimalist palette, which helps me creating all the colors and nuances I need and like. Though I don't have a lot of yellow accessories or yellow clothes, I don't have a lot of yellow objects in my home and decor. Yellow is the color I use the most in my art and it is the secret color which is hidden inside all the other colors. My favorite colors and the ones I like to use the most are warm colors. Blue is a color I don't use a lot, it's my least favorite color actually. I don't wear blue clothes and I can keep a tube of Bleu Outremer Ultramarine Blue for more than one year before getting to the end of it. In real life, I'm not a creature from the sea or the ocean or water, so maybe it makes sense. I prefer pink, peach colors, orange, warm, yellow, red. In French, we have a lot of words to describe the different shades of red. There is groseille, coquelicot, garance, vermillon, écarlate, amarante, grenat, carmin, pourpre, andrinople, cramoisie, cochenille, ruby, incarnat. As I work with paper, I mainly apply colors on craft paper or mulberry paper or on my sketchbooks or on backgrounds for decor for book projects and other projects I'm working on these days. Applying colors on paper to this day continues to fascinate me. The way the pigments spread at the surface of the paper or get under control, layering the colors little by little till reaching the perfect shade, toning down a color or intensifying it, 
all that are such a key part of the joy of creating. The colors I like both in my palette, in my home or in my wardrobe are rather warm colors, not too bright and inspired by colors from the 18th century. There is nothing like time traveling to get inspired by colors from past centuries and learning from the masters. Though the 17th century is seen nowadays as a century of constant wars, deep misery, starvation, big epidemies in Europe, which could only be represented by the color black, in contrast, the art and painting of this period are a celebration of deep blue, intense red and rich gold, which I find so inspiring. The colors, though, in the 17th century are only available to the aristocracy. But in the 18th century, thanks to the progress of chemistry, the middle class and the bourgeois can also wear bright, cheerful and light colors. And the beautiful nuance and soft colors of the pastel palette arrive, with the trend of the color pink started by La Marquise de Pompadour. When I started to give in person workshops in 2008, the thing which surprised me the most was the anxiety and stress that my students invariably had when deciding which color to choose. To paint their papers, to dress their characters, or to mix colors together, or to associate colors together. The combination of colors I saw them choosing again and again was pink and purple, or pink, purple and white, which always surprised me as it's the combination I would never use as a first choice. They were mainly ladies, of course, and I guess in the habit of wearing these colors, they are two very feminine colors, and they maybe appeared like a very safe choice for them, I don't know. Even today in my online workshops, the color problem comes back again and again. We are all the result of our culture, education and upbringing. Depending how and where we grew up, our approach to color is very different. Being dressed with too much flashy colors is seen in France as a sign of bad taste, vulgarity and sometimes even poverty. When you wander in Paris next to school located in very rich neighborhood or poor suburbs, you meet children dressed with very different colors clothes and very different colors. The poor have the flashy ones. And when it comes to art and creating, all these cultural aspects of colors should vanish, but they don't totally disappear. A lot of apprentice magicians and students of my workshops are shy with colors. And whatever color they will choose, they will do the wrong choice and ruin their perfectly beautiful immaculate white paper creation. I have no idea if they have similar problems in their home decor or to choose their clothes, but I wouldn't be very surprised if it was the case. If you are also shy and a bit awkward when using colors and would like maybe to get a bit more comfortable mixing them, choosing them, you need to develop your color sensitivity and noticing the colors around you. Nature is our best teacher. You will learn a lot wandering in autumn and sometime also in winter. In woods, forests, noticing the yellow lichen next to the dark dry berries. Or the fruits and vegetables in your kitchen. Train your eyes, visit art museums, open art books from different centuries, back to the antique and medieval era and train your eyes, dissect the colors. Force yourself as a game to use nuances of colors you would never use normally, colors you usually stay away from. Keep practicing. To become a better colorist, use different combinations and start again and again. You can also become more comfortable with colors using them diluted and intensifying them little by little. And if some colors were unfortunate choice, it's not the end of the world, you can try again. Now you are wondering why caring so much for colors. Why not getting all satisfied and happy with white, beige and black? 
because there is a real exciting, healing, comforting, uplifting power in using colors, creating them and applying them on paper. Looking at the light and delicate pigments of watercolor floating at the surface of the paper is incredibly calming, soothing and mesmerizing. Or manipulating color sticks directly with your fingers with smooth and creamy pastels and a compact matte powdery color. Using some jaune de Naples, cadmium red or bleu outremer ultramarine blue doesn't have the same impact in your mood than if you use white or neutral colors. It's impossible. Using colors and choosing them gives an immediate sense of happiness and joy you will never get using dark gray or black colors. If you are interested in colors and the history of colors and want to understand the fight between blue and red in past centuries and why the color blue is dominating our modern world in the 21st century, I would highly encourage you to read Michel Pastoureau's books which have been a resource to prepare this video and are also precious books to have in a studio bookshelves. His books are all translated. He has published books about the six colors and many others about stripes, a short one, The Little Book of Colors, and The Colors of Our Memories, which is the one I'm currently reading. Now, if you are inspired to play with colors and paper and you would like to start paper adventure with me, celebrating the magical uh, Christmas color of all, which is red, the color red, the dangerous color, feel free to visit my online workshops website, learnthemagicofpaper.com. You have all the links under this video and you can choose between all the Christmas workshops I have created and pick up an adventure. So you can choose between the musical Christmas, the old fairy tale, the gingerbread houses and the puss in boots, the Christmas lights. There are a lot of choices and they are available till December 22 and once in all you of course keep access to the content. You will find all the information you need just under this video. I will come back soon with other art videos and all my Christmas video series of course very soon and don't forget to give a thumbs up if you appreciated what you saw it's always helpful and i'm very grateful for those who do it because it helps me a lot and you can also subscribe if you don't want to miss all the videos coming thank you and i will see you very soon mm -hmm.